As famous poet Yaya Kamal stated, I watched you, O beautiful Istanbul. There is no place I haven't seen, visited and known. As long as I live, be the owner of my heart's throne. Even loving only one part of you is worth a life, Yaya Kemal. Istanbul is thousands of years old and its establishment dates back to Prophet Solomon. It is a city of emperors. It has served as the capital of two great empires, Byzantine Empire and the Ottoman Empire. It has not only served as a bridge between the ancient and modern cultures, but also between Europe and Asia. It has been a cradle of civilization for thousands of years. Istanbul, which is among the world's most beautiful cities, has been given 112 different names by different nations. Following are some examples. Before the conquerance of Istanbul, it was called Constantinopolis by the Byzantines, and on the streets it was called Stimpolis, which is an abbreviation for the word Megrali Byzas, founded the city in the year 500 BC. The city was named after its first finder, Byzas, and was called Byzantion. The city was called Antonian during the region of Marcus Aurelius, the ruler of the city who had named it after his moral father Antonius. When the Great Constantine Empire moved from Rome to Istanbul, it was also called Neo-Rome, New Rome or Constantinopolis. Later the Arabs called the city Constantinia. After the conquerance of the city, the name Constantinia was used on metallic and paper on a. The people always called it Istanbul. During the 17th and the 18th century, the name Istanbul was also used. And later, this beautiful city's name took its present stay form. When the sun of Islam brightened the whole world, Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, explained the importance of the city and foretold that it would become the capital of the largest empire and of its time. He had praised the commander and the soldiers who would conquer it. Islamic armies who wanted to be the recipient of this honour had stated military expeditions which commenced in the 35th year after the Hegira. The holy emigration where Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, emigrated to Medina from Mecca. These armies made nine attempts to conquer Istanbul. The holy Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, had said, Constantonia will surely be conquered. What a great conqueror he will be who conquers the city, and how great the soldiers will be who conquers it. Fatih Sultan Mehmet Han knew that if he conquers the city, he would attain the honour. He also knew that he could only conquer Istanbul if he got the control of the Bosporus. So in a short period of four months, he got Baz Kassan Fort constructed, now known as Rumeli Hissari. Fatim personally designed the trench mortar and got other cannons designed. The world was going to see flying missiles and cannons first time in its history. The city was attacked after the completion of the preparation. After 58 days of furious fights, Byzantine Empire became history when Istanbul was conquered on May 29, 1453, but Istanbul's bright quest for a bright future had just started.
The whistling of the southwest winds has ceased. My eyes are shut and I am listening to Istanbul. Orhan Veli Kanak. After the conquest, a cultural artistic campaign started during the 400 years of the Ottoman Empire rule. The number of cultural works of art exceeded the number as compared 1,111 years of Byzantine rule. The Ottoman guard of the city developed it as a center of art and culture and consequently turned it into an open-air museum. The cultural and artistic buildings constructed in the city during the Ottoman region topped the Turkish Islamic civilization. As a result of this, all the world admired the splendor of the Ottoman civilization. Yes, the poor city of Constantinople was no longer there. Instead, they were a rich city which later became the center of the Muslim civilization. Istanbul was to become one of the most popular, richest, and the most important cities of the world. Let us now visit this historical and cultural heritage which has survived for hundreds of years. Istanbul has a population of more than 10 million and is among the world's most populated cities. Despite the fact that it is very populous, it is the only city that is situated in two different continents, Asia and Europe. You can go around in Istanbul by using the following transports. Hundreds of municipality buses plus private buses, domshes, taxis which only moves when it's filled with passengers, high-speed hovercrafts, steamships for the transport between the Asian and the European parts, historic tramway which operates between Taksim and Tunnel, a hundred-year-old metro operating between Tunnel and Karaköy, underground modern metro train systems that operate between Taksim and Dört Levent, You may use all this transport by buying tokens or an electronic chip named Akhla Bilet, smart ticket. Atatürk Airport, which is among the world's most modern airports. Turkish Airlines and many other airline companies are operating in Turkey. For intercity travel, you may use train, ship or luxury passes. The Bosphorus is a narrow 33 km long strait which connects eight Europe. It has been the subject of myths and a center of art for ages. It was a center of art in both Byzantine and Ottoman Rheem. Many summer houses, mansions, gardens, mosques and monasteries were built here. Here are some of these palaces, mansions and summer houses. Yildiz Palace, Small Slug Mansions, Illamur Mansion, Küçüksu Mansion, Beyler Bey Palace and Shiran Palace. In our days too, with its luxurious restaurants, more tranquil tea houses and benches along the coastal lines, the Bosphorus is one of the most spectacular places in Istanbul. You can enjoy this beauty by hiring a small boat or taking a tour in one of the ships of city maritime lines.
the Bosporus Bridge. Bosporus Bridge, stretching from Beylar Bey to Ortakay, is the first suspension bridge that has been constructed to link Europe to Asia. Construction of the bridge, which started in 1970, was completed in 1973. Its full length is 1560 meters. Fatih Sultan Mehmet Bridge. This is the second bridge constructed over Marmara Sea to link Europe to Asia. The bridge stretches from Kavajit to Rumeli Hissarusta. The history of the bridges ever constructed on the Golden Horn date back to the first half of the 19th century. The first bridge was constructed in 1844. The bridge was replaced with a wooden one later and after it suffered a fire in the building of the new one, it was deconstructed and set between Husko and Balat. The new bridge took six years to build and was opened in 1992. The third bridge on the Golden Horn is Unkapana or Ataturk Bridge. It links Unkapana to Azapkapa and is 477 metres long. The last bridge is known as Golden Horn Bridge. It stretches between Ivansarai and Halichola. The construction of the bridge was completed in 1974 and links E5 Highway to the Bosporus Bridge. Istanbul is a unique city that homes many beauties. It is a city that has been a home to many civilizations for years and their cultural heritage still lives on with the city. With a history of 8,000 years, the city itself has become a great museum. Pavilions, waterside villas, mansions and casseras are among the productions of different architectural styles and they are embellished the city over the years, forming a link between today and past. The most charming ones among these are as follows. Mustafa Rashid Pasha Villa Marshal Zeki Pasha Villa Sultan Villas of Ortake Sheriflar Villa in Emirgan Sadula Pasha Villa in Çengelköy, Rukiye Sultan Villa in Kanlıca Bey Hasan Pasha Villa, Armenian Villas on Büyük Dere Bey, The Line of Villas of Yenike, Kıbrıslar Villa, it has the largest front site, Said Halim Pasha Villa in Yenike, Abu Defendi Villa situated between Count Osterog Villa in Üsküdar, the Villas of Kandilli, Feti Pasha Villa in Kuskuncu, Yaji Şefik Bey Villa in the north of Kalanajakwai, the Villas of the Embassies, Vejazade Ekrem Bey Villa in the northern point of Istinye Bey, Memdu Pasha Villa near Büyükdere, Kadir Pasha Villa in Kalanaja Bay, all the villas in Kalmanja, including Halin, SM Villa, Saraska Riza Pasha Villa in Varinke, Hekim Pasha, 
Salye Fendi Villa near Anadolu Hisarı. Close to Marmara Sea stands Marki Necip Villa. Amcazide Hüseyin Pasha Villa between Kanlıca and Anadolu Hisarı. And near that stands Zarif Mustafa Pasha Villa. Villa of Anadolu Hisarı and Vanike. All the villas of Çengelköy, Hüseyin Kazım Kidri Villa between Havuzbaşı and Beylerbeyi, Ahmet Mithat Efendi Villa in Beykoz, Beykoz Kasr Villas of Paşabahçe and Beykoz, Chamlija Hills, widely used as promenade places, are in the Anatolian part of the city. Büyük Chamlija Hill is of the biggest hills in Istanbul, providing a spectacular panorama of the city. A person that stands on the hill can easily view either sides of the Bosporus, the islands and Marmara. It is also a pleasure to watch the sunrise and the sunset from the hill. In Büyük Çamlıca there is a restaurant built in the Ottoman style. Gülhane Park Situated between Topkapı Palace and Sarayburnu, Gülhane Park is a very famous attraction. The park is situated onto a very large area and is a home for some of the most original trees and bushes. The side of the park that oversees Sarayburnu has an astonishing view. Along the path that has trees on both sides, there are restaurants, coffee houses, a zoo, a playground for kids, an exhibition place for crafts, and a famous Karagos, Hajivat theatre, which are open all through the summer. There are 10 islands on the Marmara Sea today. The islands are populated and also are places of interest as many people choose to spend their weekends there. They are Büyük Ada, Heybeli Ada, Hınıl Ada, Bulgaz Ada, Sedev Adası, Kaşık Adası and Pid Adası. The most famous ones among them are Büyük Ada and Heybeli Ada. The islands are also called the Princess Islands. As in Byzantine times, they were the places where princes were sent to exile. Büyük Ada As its name suggests, it is the biggest among the ten. Its hills are defensively populated by trees and the island has a diversity of different flowers, trees and herbal life. Driving cars and all motor vehicles is prohibited in the islands in order to prevent air pollution. The only means of transport is carriages. This way, while you experience a nostalgic tour, the island it remains clear. With its beautiful sea, natural beauties, fish restaurants and carriage tours, Büyük Ada is a place you should definitely visit. Hey Beliada. Hey Beliada is the second biggest of the islands. It is a unique place with landscapes and tranquility. You can enjoy carriage tours also in this island. It takes only an hour by boat and is definitely worth seeing. This island is hidden among the trees. It offers everything a holiday resort can offer and sure promises many natural beauties to the visitors.
Kununga Ada is the closest island to the city. This island, which is called Protus in Greek, was the exiled place of famous Roman Diogen, where he was poisoned in the Hysteris Monastery. The monastery still remains until this day. Burgazida, in the first ages, the island was called Panarmus, meaning safe quay. The first inhabitants of the islands were Greek fishermen. Later, the old mansions are restored, beautiful villas are built. The most beautiful pavilions of the islands stand along the coastal line. Emirgan is in the European part between Istimia and Baltalmana. It is a very famous grove which is a promenade place in the grove. There are three pavilions, each an example of a different architectural style and they add to the beauty of the grove. Pavilions serve also as library, cafe and a consort hall. The grove has beautiful and very famous tulip gardens. Uskudar. Starting from 500 BC, Uskudar has been a developed place in the old days Persians used to store here all the riches they had looted from Anatolia. So the city was called Hispolis, meaning golden city. In other story, the city is called Hispolis because every day at sunset, with the last beams of the sun, the place took on a golden colour. Uskadar has always been and still is one of the most beautiful districts of Istanbul. The old buildings that surround it bestow a meaning on its beauty. Just by the quay stands Mihruma Mosque. Between the quay and the Uskadar Square, stands the fountain of Sultan Ahmet III. Near the fountain is Yeni Vali de Rosk, as they are present in many examples of the Ottoman architecture. There are avaries in this mosque too. As well as providing a nest for the birds, they also symbolize the compassion the Ottomans had for birds and all animals. Aviaries still exist and continue to home birds. Taksim. Taksim is a kind of insurrection between the fast developing sites and the old and traditional places like Bayolo. Its famous square is considered one of the central points of the city. Taksim is named after a large reservoir that still remains. One of the beautiful things about the historic monuments is that they are decorated with beautiful sayings, with poems or with verses from the Quran, and this famous water reservoir built between the years of 1732 to 1733 has meaningful verse from Quran. On it which reads, we created everything from water. An Italian designed Taksim monument that gave Taksim an identity. Professor Pietro Canoria was built between 1930 to 1940 
of the important buildings that sounded Taksim Ayatria's church. The Marmara Hotel and Jalan Intercontinental are the ones that in Medistry holds anybody's attention. Istikal Jaddesi There is no doubt that Istikal Street is one of the most colourful, funniest and crowded places in Istanbul. It is possible that every hour of the day to meet people from all colours and cultures. The symbol of the street is of course the tram. It continues to operate on routes from Taksim to the tunnel. The tunnel. In the old days, this place was called the Hyde Sidewalk. It started to be called the tunnel after a tube was constructed here in 1875. World's third oldest and shortest routed underground and still operates linking Karakoy to Bayola. Pera Palace When the Ottoman Empire was linked to Europe by a railroad, it was decided that a luxurious hotel be built. Yatakul, the Vagonlar company, started the building of the hotel in 1893, but it hasn't been completed before 1895. Pera Palace, which remained as the most glamorous hotel of the 1950s, has had many famous guests from all over the world and it got to be known worldwide after a film applied from a novel of Ag Agatha Christie was shoot here. The other beautiful districts of Istanbul are Beşiktaş, Eminönü, Kadıköy and Ortaköy. Kumkapa. Kumkapa is one of the most famous and high quality spots of entertainment. It is also known for its fish restaurants. Pierre Lotti. This 19th century coffee house, which derived its name from the famous French poet Pierre Lotti, has an astonishing panorama situated on Gumrishtu Hills. This coffee house is a warm atmosphere decorated in oriental style. It is also a delight to watch Kartane and Marmara from here. Anadolu History Anadolu History is situated at the district that bears the same name in Asian parts at sits where the Göksu reaches the Marmara Sea. Hisar was the first one to be built by the Ottomans to control the sea traffic. The order to build the castle Hisar was given by Yildir and Bayezid, who wanted to conquer the city in 1394 in order to block the help that would come back from Black Sea to the Byzantine Empire. Rumeli History Rumeli sits in the European side of the Bosporus. The order to build this castle Hisar was given by Fatih Sultan Mehmet, the conqueror, so as to stop any help coming to Byzantine Empire via the Bosporus. It was built in 1452 within three and a half months' time. By the help of the artillery pieces that were situated in two Hisars, Bosporus was completely close to sea traffic. Rumeli history is placed at the narrowest side of the Bosporus right opposite Anadolu history. It was restored in 1953. An open-air theatre was built in the same year. Nowadays, it is used as a museum. 
Many history forms a spectacular scenery when it's filmed from above, as the shape of the walls suggests the letters of the Prophet Muhammad's name. Yedi Kule Fort Yedi Kule Fort is the area where territorial waters of the Marmara Sea are really close to land. This area has been named after the Yedi Kule Fort. Yedi Kule is an inner fort which was constructed by Fatih Sultan Mehmed after this returning from the war with Byzantine Empire and entering the city through the Golden Gate. Local and foreign statesmen like Sultan Osman II, David Kolomnos, the Rome Emperor of Trabzon and his sons, the last Abbasid, Kalipu Mutzekil IV, and the Lord of Crimea were among the captives who were imprisoned in the dungeons of Yedikule Fort. Since 1959, when this fort was restored, it has been used as an open-air museum for concerts and different festivals. Couple the Charsha, the Covered Bazaar. The Covered Bazaar is one of the most interesting and enchanting centre for shopping in the world. It has contributed to the city's eco economy for hundreds of years. This huge bazaar was constructed by Fatih Sultan Mehmed's son after the conquest of Istanbul. Later, it grew bigger and developed and eventually became a centre of eye, catching abundance and variety. It has protected its originality in spite of all the fire incidents. South Lara Charges Sir, the bazaar is set of second-hand books. This place has been a centre for the buying and selling of old books in Istanbul since the 15th century. This famous bazaar is between the Fetchilar gate of the covered bazaar and the Bayezid square. Safalar bazaar is not as magnificent as it used to be, but it has served book lovers for hundreds of years. Musul Charshtse, the Egyptian bazaar. It is the second most popular bazaar in Istanbul after the covered bazaar. In olden days, there was a bazaar where the people of Geneva and Venice sold their products. The bazaar was dubbed Egyptian because the most of the products sold here came from Egypt. The Europeans, on the other hand, named it the Spice Market. Modern day Egyptian bazaars like a carousel along with colourful, vivid and sweet-scented surroundings. If you like spices and are fond of eating, you may spend your whole day here. Here you may find the best pastorami, olives and cheese. You may find all the healing herbs ranging from linden to coconuts. You may be enchanted while going through the shops of this bazaar. Beylar Bey Sarayı, Beylar Bey Palace. Beylar Bey Palace is situated on the bank of Bosporus in Beylar Bey, an area named after the palace on the Asian side of Istanbul. This complex consists of a palace, a garden, and some small constructions connected with the palace. The main part of the complex, the Beylar Bey Palace, is made up of a woman quarter annexed to each wall. Richly decorated man quarters at the seaside, Marmar Kushk, marble quarters at the backside garden, Sura Kushk, yellow quarters, and the palace's major stable, Hasahir, seaside quarters, and the main Bay Larbe building were constructed by Sultan Abdulaziz.
Dolmabahçe Sarayı Müzesi, Dolmabahçe Palace Museum, Sultan Abdülmecid constructed this palace. The architects were Garabet and Migogas Bailan. The construction of the palace started in 1846, but could only be completed in 1856. Dolmabahçe and its annexes were built in Beşiktaş on the 250,000 square meter area between the Dolmabahçe Avenue and the Bosporus. This area was filled with soil between the construction. This palace has eight halls and the 200 rooms. It was decorated with the most outstanding and magnificent accessories of the time. Askeri Müze, Military Museum Following are some things that are being exhibited at this museum. All costumes and uniforms of the Ottoman military, bows, arrows, rifles, stamps, armours, large and luxurious tent for the king, Otohumayan, kings, swords, banners, photographs from the wars, Byzantine cavalry banners, different objects used in wars from Selchuk's up to the declaration of the democracy and the chain used by the Byzantines. When they closed the Golden Horn, apart from these things, this museum also has metal band performances. A Jansuri musical band, which was one of the most important components of the Ottoman culture, Meto band, which led the Ottoman troops while starting out military campaigns, played a very important role in boosting the soldiers' morale. Yerebatan Sarıncı Müzesi, Yerebatan Çistan Museum. Yerebatan Çistan is also known as Yerebatan Sarayı, Yerebatan Palace. It is situated in Sultan Ahmet on the left side of Gülhane Park. It was built by Byzantine Emperor Justina I around 540 AD. The rocky ground was hollowed out and around 300 pillars supported it from underground. Later it became one of the most important water reservoirs for the city. Medusa's head is also an important attraction for the visitors of the palace. According to a legend, Medusa was able to convert the people who looked into her eyes into stone. On hearing this, the king of the time ordered that the, her head be cut and put under a stone. There is no concrete proof about this legend, but still the people believe it. Binbir Direk Sarıncı, Thousand Posted Chistone. This Thousand Posted Chistone was constructed by Emperor Constantis and Senator Philosenos in 330 AD. It was built as a water reservoir for the Lavarus Palace. This reservoir was restored years ago and acquired a new identity. This recreational center is a museum at the same time. Archaeological Museum. This museum is situated in Gülhane. Ancient Orient work is exhibited here. We owe to Rassam Osman Hamdi Bey and his self sacrificing work for the present appearance of the museum. Here you can also see many sculptures from Hellenistic, Byzantine, and Roman empires. Mosaic Museum. It is situated in Sultan Ahmed near Arasta Bazaar. Thousands of years old and extraordinary mosaics are being exhibited here at this museum. Some unique mosaics, which are found nowhere else, can also be seen here.
Denis Musée, the Marine Museum. This museum is situated opposite to the Beşiktaş Dock. This museum has ancient sailors' uniforms, navy models and maquettes, and pictures regarding the history of Turkish navy. There are also some pictures of ships and their equipments from the Ottoman and Turkish navy. Some accidents and matures, different warcraft weapons like torpedoes and rifles and maquettes of navy commandments are also being exhibited here. Toka Palace Museum The massive Ottoman Empire ruled over more than 50 different nations of ethnic groups. Toka Palace stated serving as the centre of this empire in the year 1460. Topka Palace has the following buildings in it. Highly decorated outbuildings, harem section dormitories for the soldiers who guarded the palace, a massive kitchen for the palace, a big dormitory for the servants of the palace, a big place named Kubelti for the Council of State meetings, a section named Turka i Sadet, the cardigan of happiness, where relics of Prophet Muhammad may peace be upon him and the caliphs are placed. The Gulhana Hospital, Sultan Ahmed III Library, a school, the Department of Treasury, a giant stable for the king's horses and a church named Aya Irini, which once served as a weapon depot. This palace was turned into a museum in 1924. Nowadays, the treasury building is being used as an exhibition spot for the palace's weapon collection. This weapon collection belongs to the period between 7th and 20th century. The palace's kitchen is used to exhibit ceramics, porcelain, glass and metallic utensils. Hulka is Sadet, the cardigan of happiness section is the place where relics of Prophet Muhammad may peace be upon him and the caliphs are placed. This place is also called Kutsal Emanetlar, all the sacred and trusted belonging. In Fatih's decorated lodge we may come across with the Ottoman treasure Harem Dairesi, the Harem section. Harem is the area where the king leads his family life. It has three main parts. The first one is de dedicated to the king. The second one to the mother of the king. And the third one to the princess. An odalisk part is situated near the courtyard. The part is for the odalisks who serve the king and his family. The following writing is written on the main door of this part. All the doors are opened by Allah. May He open all the beneficial doors to us. On the outer side of the harem is a section dedicated to Karabas, who are responsible for the security of the harem. The harem section of the top couple of palaces situated in an area of 6,720 square meters. It contains 259 rooms. 46 toilets, 12 rooms for keeping trunks, 8 long rooms, a hospital, 2 dormitories, 4 kitchens, 6 pantries and a swimming pool. All of these buildings are a result of the Ot Ottoman decoration style. Unfortunately, some local or foreign writers have misinterpreted harem deliberately or unintentionally. The Ottoman kings who also try to lead their lives according to the teachings of Islam or shown as womanizers or sexual perverted. Some local and western writers try to prove that Ottoman kings enjoyed the paintings of naked women. This is utterly untrue. Since these claims are not based on facts, 
On the contrary, 90% the odalists who lived in these harems were the servants of kings' families. A king would not have an illegitimate affair in such a place. On the contrary, some odalists who the king married later became valid sultan or the wife of the king. Parties that consisted of dance and alcohol and were not in accordance with the teachings of Islam never held here. The walls of these places that were covered with Quranic verses served as material and spiritual educational spots for the Ottoman kings and their family members whom the light of the verses ruled the world for hundreds of years. If the above mentioned claims of the West were true, a Western historian would not have said these words. The 300 years of 600 years reign of the Ottoman Empire were more than the sum of other powers of the world at that time.